So we are in Sweetwater, Texas right now, and we're like a mile away from this museum. We thought we got to see it. It's the National WASP World War II Museum. Um, WASP meaning women, Air Force service pilots. Um, and they, they were in, uh, started in World War II, which I think is fascinating because when I was reading, a lot of these women were born right around when women could get the vote. So they are like the second generation of women um, being viewed as, you know, there are equals, sort of, at that time. But uh, these are some strong women that were part of the WASP. Right, and this program, uh, you know, was born out of necessity when the war started. Real quickly, uh, the U.S. Air Force realized that they did not have enough qualified pilots to spread them out yeah. on all of the different areas that were needed. And I'm talking about stateside. They had mail that needed to be flown. They needed uh, uh, military personnel flown back and forth. They needed test pilots, and they needed pilots to take the planes from the factories to the areas where yeah. they're going to ship them overseas. They need even needed pilots that would tow targets that recruits were shooting at in the sky so you can see how fearless these women ended up being. Yeah. And then probably the scariest things is after the planes would be repaired, ones that were brought back to the States for major repairs, they would be the first pilot that would take it up to make sure that the airframe is still uh, airworthy. So there was tons of different jobs they had, much more than we've listed here. We're going to get a lot more smarter when we're walking around in there. We only know what we read on the website, yeah. which is pretty extensive. It's a and great I, website. I would yeah. recommend reading that before you come here. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, let's go inside. We're going to start uh, numerically with uh, hangar number one because I'm that smart. Oh, yeah. let's do it. So we're across the street from the National Wasp World War II Museum. Looks like there's two hangars here. We're going to go inside there. You can see that we have parked the Honda alongside the building. This far area that we just drove through is probably where the RV parking is. The National Wasp World War II Museum is an awesome documentation and brings these women's histories to life. It really is inspiring, and it educates all generations about their story of being the first women to fly America's military craft. The museum is located on the original training field, Avenger Field, in Sweetwater, Texas. And as you can see here, admission is free. I think this place is so interesting and valuable, so be generous. So they make this easy. Make sure you get everything. It says follow the numbers. Right. So we had two, three, and so what did we do in typical OGIM fashion? We went exactly backwards. <laughs> we did. That's because Mark was uh, attracted by the rivet maker. So I'd like to apologize, Sue, to you because we've got this fantastic museum that we're going to see all about the WASP program during World War II. But uh, first I got to go check out the engineering section of the OGIM show talking about riveting. And if you're bringing any kids along, this wall is really interesting called the Kids Ramp that's got all kinds of hands-on things that were related to what was going on with the WASP during World War II. Okay, let's see if anybody knows what is he sending. Mm. What do you think it is, honey? You know what? We'll let somebody leave a comment. If you know the um, code mark Okay, uh, let's just stop the suspense and tell them platypus. <laughs> likes that word. The women Air Force service pilots were the first female military pilots, but were classified as U.S. Federal Civil Service employees. And this is interesting. The women did not participate in combat directly, but they did take the place of men who were military. However, the women didn't get any military benefits, and at times they had to pay their own way to get there, even to get home if they died during service which is pretty ridiculous. 
but they did pave the way for women in military service and broke social barriers. Like Mark had mentioned before, the women completed dangerous missions such as testing new aircraft, ferrying planes across the country, and towing banners for ammunition practice. Um, this is kind of cool. They have an area that they switch up called uh, WASP in the spotlight. So they'll take one of the women and actually show their life and what happened as far as getting them into this. Um, this was really interesting. I did read that when they opened up this actual display, they had the pilots, two sons and daughter here for the opening. It sounds like there's still maybe about 13 WAFs still alive but they are well into their 90s. One woman this year, she said she knows for sure is turning 100. What a treasure. This is pretty cool. They've got um, a room here with videos and they actually simulate this as being the orientation that um, the pilots needed to go through. So we're gonna sit down and pretend that we are in training to be a pilot and check this video out. And it's supposed to go on when we go in here. So let's see what it is. In the 16 months the WASP existed, more than 25,000 women applied for training, but only 1,879 candidates were accepted. Among them, 1,074 successfully completed the grueling program at Avenger Field. That's about 800 that did not make it. The women completed 30 weeks of training before being assigned to duty bases all over the United States. So I think this is funny that Sue thinks she can do a chin-up. The first time the reality of my new physicality hit me, you know, I, I wasn't trying to do a chin-up. I was trying to pull myself up, and I was dumbfounded on how I couldn't anymore. Your turn to be dumbfounded on camera. All right, first of all, I want to check this out. Things we had to do, yep, jumping jacks, got it, yep. got it, sit-ups, I can do that. Push-ups, er. I have neck issues. This is my weak spot. Let's All see right. if I could have been a wasp. All right. Plus, you have to jump up. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Drum roll. That hurts. The new reality. <laughs> Look, it's, she's that still, hurts. She's defeated. <laughs> I know I couldn't do it. I couldn't even do that in high school. <laughs> why, why would I do it at 66? 66? Jesus. You gonna give that a try? Well, I'm just looking at some of the qualifications, and I didn't get real far, but you know, as far as nutrition, I have breakfast, uh, <laughs> you know, and I have lunch and I have dinner. There's another part I know Mark could have never done it because you're in bed by 9 p.m. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Put down one o'clock or later, he's good. All right, so on the physical training, I think I can at least do the chin ups. Let's try. Are you ready? Ready. All right. Oh. 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 I just heard it. I thought. Oh. Whoa. 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 Oh. 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 You know what? <laughs> that was way too easy. Walk away. This thing's unbelievable. So this was called the Link Trainer, L-I-N-K. And apparently Edwin Albert Link is the dude that uh, created this thing in 1929. 500,000 U.S. pilots were trained on this. So it was no different for all of the WASPs. They had to be trained on this. And if they didn't pass this test, they couldn't advance on. These little airplanes, that's what this blue thing was. It was called the blue box. And they've taken the wings off so that they can put a plexiglass thing for us to look inside. But they literally would sit in this plane and they would shut this lid totally can't see what they're doing okay now i would normally take one for the team and climb in there because that's the way i am for the o gym channel but we're also about honesty and authenticity and i don't look like a wasp do i 
Are you, are you waiting for an answer? Honey, <laughs> I'm a dumb guy, okay? Oh, good. Get out of my way. Right. I'm coming through. Whoa. Are you able to get in there? Yeah, I can get in there, but Jesus, if you've got cla claustrophobia, yeah. Yeah. this is not for you. Yeah. Just think about it. Oh, my God. It's got a top on it that closes up. Yeah. And you can't see nothing. It's not there. A lot of things keep track of, not even close. I think you have more things to keep track of in the um, in the RV. Really? Yeah. Are, are you giving me kudos, honey? You could be a pilot, baby. Yay. You are a pilot. All right, get out of my way. I'm flying. All right, flying. don't knock me down the stairs. Or this will be the last video of the gym. <laughs> All right? I mean, I can do a lot of chin-ups, but walking backwards on the stairs is a little tougher for me. Wiggly, is it? I suppose it's yeah, it's wiggly. Movie. You know why it's wiggly? You gotta simulate that you're moving. Right, because underneath here was a gimbal and a bunch of bellows, and now I'm looking at all the rudimentary wow. controls, and they had a little drum, a little uh, rotary limit switch here, and everything. Very crude, but. State of the art back then. This is more your speed. Look at that chair. Yeah. And it has a door. Yeah, wow. Was made for somebody with a back like mine. Look at this. I don't even have any steps to go over. <laughs> Look at all these buttons. Whoa. Hey, Mark. Here's the guide. Okay, I could read it. I could read the instructions. Yeah, oh Mark Mark God. can't get the plane off the ground. You failed. Oh, you failed. You failed. Each WASP graduate had to take 240 hours of training and learning about all sorts of different things and air currents and terrain and how to read maps, basic mechanics of the engine. So if there was things that were possible to be jerry-rigged or fixed so that they could get out of a situation, they could do that. Just fascinating. So, of course, you've got to uh, make adaptations. You've got a petite woman. You're going to need cushions. So here, uh, Wasp Mildred um, bragged that she was a three-cushion pilot just so she could reach the pedals. You do realize the origin of these, uh -huh. these cushions. Yeah. So you guys, anybody who watches the channel, you're working on the black tank. You got your cushions. So that might be why... Their mascot was called Fifi. Do you ever Ooh, think of that? Let's go explore that. So apparently there's more than one Fifi in this world. Mark was a little shocked, and this is our Fifi. You can find it in our Amazon store. So apparently in the original book by uh, Roland Dahl, uh, talking about the gremlins um, that Walt Disney was going to make a movie about, the particular gremlin was something that they didn't like on the plane and caused all sorts of problems. The women actually turned it around like they do many times in life and make something good out of it. And they embraced uh, Fifanella as a good gremlin. And in fact, someone that you wanted along with you on the flight. Disney uh, shared that uh, mascot with them and we don't know what the arrangement is, but we think it's pretty cool. And before we head outside and over to the other hangar, let's check out the gift shop. We just came out of Hangar 1 on the right, which opened in 2021. It's a replica of the original hangar and was built to house the museum. But the building on the left is actually one of the original hangars still intact. This is where you'll find the planes and more. If the Wasp Museum comes a Harvest Host a location, you can see that there's plenty of room to swing into this parking lot and face the right way so you can get out. But if for whatever reason you had to go around the back of the museum, you can see that they do have a roadway that goes all the way around the back and it traverses a gravel area here. So it's, uh, I don't know, about March 3rd or 4th, something like that. Right. And we found out in uh, mid-April, end of April, 
there's a wasp homecoming and they have that every year it's a big fundraiser for the museum and that's when they celebrate the end of the war and the wasps coming home from duty and uh, um, you know the end of the program and one of the things uh, apparently is this whole area fills up with uh, different planes that participate in the event yeah. Uh, we wish we would have been here timing wise so yeah. that we could have attended that but that's just the way it works when you're an RV or you're breezing in and breezing out but it's a yearly thing so if that's something that you'd be interested in watch for it you know it's it's a big deal so yeah. we're told that there are 13 women 13 wasp pilot pilots that um, had their ashes spread along where the runway used to be and they do have some plaques here that um, show whose ashes are spread. This is, was their desire, this was their wish for their ashes. And shortly, there's gonna be a, a homecoming in April, it's March now, and they said shortly after the homecoming, they've actually got one more lady's ashes to spread out here. Um, she just recently died. I think that's a pretty cool memorial for these uh, very brave, strong women. So now we're getting into Hangar 2. Oh, man. Oh, boy. A little bit of a preview. All right, hangar number two. And this is the original. Oh my gosh, yeah. So this is an original um, hangar here. This was built in 1929, if I remember correctly. Totally cool thing about being here is this is where it happened. This is not just a museum on some other spot. This is where it all was uh, happening with their training. I just have to say this whole experience in here has been so interesting on the history of all this, plus um, the struggle, the ad adaptation, and the strength of women um, pushing into a, a men's world once again. What would we do without women? I think my favorite part of this whole museum was being able to read about each individual woman and what it took for them to get there and what their life was all about, the struggles, the successes, and it's just fascinating to see how far women have come since they broke this glass ceiling for this part. I just want to thank you at this point for joining us and checking out this awesome museum with us, but you really need to see it yourself. There is so much more here that we didn't show. And it is now a harvest host, thanks to Mark. He suggested it to them, he got the paperwork going, and it's now a harvest host. We work hard to stay current with the ever-changing promotions and specials that Harvest Host offers. Rest assured that when you start with our referral link, you will be able to put in any current promotion code to get that pricing. Sometimes Harvest Host has promotional campaigns that are 20% or 30%. You'll be locking in your sale percentage yearly renewal rate forever for as long as you remain an active Harvest Host member. Using our link helps support our channel and efforts without any additional cost to you. Just go to our YouTube channel and then click on any video and scroll down. You're gonna see the description and you wanna click on the show more tab and then scroll down some more. There you're gonna find the Harvest Host link. So simply click on that link and that's gonna take you to their page that says your friend gave you 15% off. Use code HHFRIENDS15 at checkout. You also wanna look up here and make sure it does say our journey in miles that we get the credit. We appreciate your support. Another way you can get to the Harvest Host is through our website. Just go to ourjourneyinmiles.com and then under the blog tab, you're going to see one of the categories is Harvest Hosts. Once you get to that page, you can read all about it and our experiences with that. And keep scrolling down. You're going to find our link that will actually take you to the site where you can sign up as a Harvest Host member. So once you get to that page, just scroll on down and you're gonna find Join Harvest Host Today. 
Please still use our link. Just insert the largest current coupon code you may find advertised, and you will receive that newer, larger percentage off and help to support our YouTube channel production costs. It's an absolute win-win. So until we get to meet you on the road, or better yet, in a campground, we invite you to join us every Sunday morning on YouTube for another episode of Our Journey in Miles.